The last time baseball and softball were in the Olympics, iPhones didn't exist. Facebook was only for college kids, and no one had to pretend to understand NFTs. But now they're back, and it's time to address something. Not just about the summer games, but sports in general. Soccer, men and women. Swimming, men and women. Tennis, men and women. Yet baseball and softball, they're two different sports. So quick question, why are baseball and softball split up by gender? The quick answer is they aren't. Believe it if you can, it's the biggest game in the country. Other than at the highest levels, softball is the most widely played recreational sport in the United States, across gender lines. And baseball isn't and never has been just for men. First, the basics. Softball's got a smaller footprint than baseball. And the games are shorter too. Softballs are also bigger than baseballs. And of course, the major difference? In baseball, pitchers throw overhand, or a sidearm if you're like that. In softball, pitchers always throw underhand. But how did softball even become a sport? Hold on to your stuffing, we're going back to Thanksgiving Day, 1887. Softball began as indoor baseball in 1887, invented by a fellow named George Hancock. Hancock grabbed a boxing glove to use for a ball, and the batters used a broomstick to tee up. And a new sport was born. As time passed, the game grew in popularity because you didn't need as much space for it, and you could even play it inside. At first, people called it a lot of things. Kitten ball, pumpkin ball, and mush ball for the size and squish of the ball. It evolved into a game played outdoors. And by 1926, a YMCA official called it softball and the name stuck. In 1933, rules were codified, and the first national softball tournament was held as part of the Chicago World's Fair. Early softball was actually mostly a men's game. But then again, most games were. 19th century society discouraged women from playing public sports of pretty much any kind. And look at the fits, would you want to play in that? Nevertheless, women started knocking down barriers across the sports world. As the most popular sport in America, women naturally gravitated towards baseball. By the 1890s, there were all women teams. Look close, folks. This is not softball, but real Major League type baseball. And during World War II, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was founded, forever remembered in the legendary film, A League of Their Own. A handful of women even played professionally in the Negro Leagues. Trailblazer Tony Stone played for four different teams over five years, becoming the first woman to regularly start on a big league team in 1949. Mamie Johnson and Connie Morgan followed her in 1953 and 1954, respectively, both joining the Indianapolis Clowns. Despite the success of these icons, they were outliers in a man's world. In most places, girls were not allowed to play youth baseball. Without the pipeline, there were few women at the higher levels. As long as little boys were trained to play sports and little girls were told not to, it would stay that way. All that changed with Title IX in 1972. The Supreme Court ruled that colleges must provide equal education to men and women, not discriminating, quote, on the basis of sex. That meant if there were sports scholarships available to men, they also had to be available for women. It's impossible to overstate the impact this ruling had on women's sports. All of a sudden, every university in the country had dozens of full rides exclusively for female athletes. Colleges added programs for women's basketball, soccer, and dozens of other popular sports. Youth leagues exploded across the country to train young girls to one day land a coveted sports scholarship. But with baseball, things played out differently. In the wake of Title IX, Little League launched a companion softball program targeted at girls. Girls across the country faced a tough choice. Be the only girl on a baseball team or play softball. Overwhelmingly, the social pressure pushed girls towards softball, and universities followed suit, setting up programs for that instead of baseball. Title IX and the events that followed inadvertently created the notion that women shouldn't play baseball. Not great. But on the other hand, softball exploded, and that is worth celebrating. The game evolved from a friendly adaptation of baseball into a wildly competitive sport in its own right, complete with its own culture, unbelievable athletic feats, and legendary champions. Softball stars have been doing things baseball players couldn't dream of for years. 
Icons Bertha Ragan Tickey and Joan Joyce helped revolutionize the sport in its early days. Both women racked up more than 750 career wins. To be clear, that is over 200 more than Cy Young's career wins. Yeah, the guy the pitching award is named for. In today's game, you can catch Monica Abbott on the mound. No big deal, but she's the fastest softball pitcher on record. When you adjust for distance, her ball crosses the plate faster than a Jacob deGrom fastball. In fact, softball players throughout history have made a habit of striking out Major League Baseball players at charity events and exhibition games. In 1931, Jackie Mitchell struck out Babe Ruth. In 1966, Joan Joyce struck out Ted Williams. Yeah, the guy who literally wrote the book on hitting, who would go on to say she was the greatest pitcher he'd ever faced. And just to show it wasn't a fluke, in 1978, Joyce struck out Hank Aaron too. Jenny Finch famously followed in these footsteps a little more recently, punching out Barry Bonds and Albert Pujols. Softball players continue to push the boundaries of the sport, setting and breaking records, making new traditions, and saying goodbye to old ones. And that is pretty much how the Olympics ended up with men's baseball and women's softball. But that doesn't have to be the end of the story. Today, there is a growing movement for girls to play baseball. Kim Eng thinks there will be a female baseball player in MLB at some point. Women can bring the heat on the softball diamond and stake their claim in baseball. And you don't have to be either team baseball or team softball. Both are incredible games, each with their own rich history. You can also catch co-ed softball leagues in many towns and cities across America, where people of all genders enjoy getting outside and playing the sport, often just as much for the game as for the post seventh inning beers. Softball is a game for amateurs as much as for pros, for all genders, as challenging for Ted Williams as it was for Joan Joyce. As long as you're having fun on the field, that's all that matters.